Hi there, in this video we're going to derive the Fourier transform of the sine and cosine functions. Now we're going to do that using the impulse function. So remember the impulse function delta t. When we did the Fourier transform of it, it gave us a value of 1. So graphically we could say there's a value delta t in the time domain. And in the frequency domain we get a value of 1. Okay. That just goes off to infinity in both directions. Now, if we were to look at a shifted impulse, so we take the impulse and we shift it in the time domain, then we'd have a function there that we could write delta t minus t naught. Okay, I'll just rewrite that a bit, a bit neater. Delta t minus t naught. Okay, for this value here, a value of t naught. Now, when we find the Fourier transform of that, so we've got delta t minus t naught. That's equivalent to e to the minus j omega t naught. Okay. Now, what that does in graphically graphic graphical terms is if we think of this value 1 it takes imagine they had all these little phasors there it takes these phasors and adds linear phase onto them so they start sh rotating round about that omega axis okay so we start getting a, a curved effect okay now I've shown you this before in a previous video when we looked at the delta function and the when we looked at the impulse function and delayed impulse okay so if you're not too sure about this you can go back and have a have a look at it okay now we can do the same thing in the frequency domain okay so in the frequency domain we can take our values here so it could be it would be steady delta t minus t naught with delta omega minus omega naught and then we can do the inverse transform if we do the inverse transform in the time domain, the, the, we start getting this effect in the in the, the time domain, okay? Because of the the symmetry of the Fourier surface, okay? So that's just a, a little reminder, okay? Now I'll, I'll get rid of that just now, right? Now we're going to start off with an identity, and again we've, we've proven this identity previously, so you can go back to one of the previous videos on shifted impulses and you'll see this. So if we have a uh, 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught now the inverse transform of that or the transform pair gives us e to the j omega naught t okay and also 2 pi delta omega plus omega naught the Fourier transform pair gives us a value e to the minus j omega naught t okay now this just tells us that a shifted impulse multiplied by 2 pi gives us this um, this e to the j omega naught t okay and if you were to shift the impulse in a, the, the opposite direction, um, you get the e to the minus two omega naught t. Now, we already know those. Those have already been proven. But what you could do is, you could, if you want, you could divide throughout by two. Okay, so I could take that two there. Right, and divide that side by two. And that side there by two. And then we would have... A half on either side. So it's a half there and a half there. Now we've also seen the trig identities uh, cos omega naught t equals e. Well, I'll just write it with the, write it slightly differently. Okay, so it just equals a half e to the j omega naught t plus a half e to the minus j omega naught t 
Okay, so that's another one that we've seen in one of the previous videos, the identity, and we showed the, the graphical representation of that, where it comes from. Okay, so that means that we can generate the cos omega t by adding both of these together, and we know the transform of both of these. Okay, so that means that quite simply we can say that the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t gives us pi delta. I'm going to get the rubber here. Pi delta omega minus omega naught plus pi delta omega plus omega naught. Okay. Now that's the one of the Fourier transform pairs that we want to get. So we know how we know what the Fourier transform of a cos omega t looks like. Now we can actually draw that and I'll show you in MATLAB just in a minute. So the cosine function just looks like that, okay. It gets on and on like that, okay. So that's the cosine function and whenever we do the Fourier transform of it, so imagine coming through the surface here, heading in that direction, and we get the Fourier transform of it. And it's equivalent to having two impulses shifted by this omega naught, okay, so it's just like two impulses like that, and that's plus omega naught and minus omega naught. Now, let me have a wee look, because I've got this in MATLAB, and um, I already built it up there, that's good, so um, I'll just go and find it here, so I'll bring it up, um, and that's me looking at it as well. Okay, so that's a um, zero point there, so that's a cos omega t, see that there and that's a Fourier transform of that cos omega t okay so I should be able to can move it in uh, and if you can see that it should be able to shift this around a bit so you can see it's a purely uh, real function and no, that's it there so there you go so I've done it in 3d here okay so that's the that's the the real part there Okay, so it's two two impulses. You see them shifted by an equal amount along that um, omega axis. Okay, and you can see that they're, they're purely real. There's no imaginary part. Right, there's an imaginary part there. Uh, uh, imaginary part is zero. Okay. So again, I'll just bring it up there, and you can see it. Okay, so that's all I want to show you there. Now we can do the similar thing uh, with the sign okay so we'll go back in here and we'll have a look at the sign so we know that the sign can be written as uh, sine omega naught t in fact I've, I've written it up there I've already written it um, no I haven't okay so all right we know that the sine omega t can be written as um, e to the j omega naught t minus e to the minus j omega naught t upon 2j so it's 1 upon 2j that's 1 upon 2j okay so again that's another identity which we I showed graphically in one of the first videos that we did okay so you can always go back and have a, a look for that okay so again, it means that we can find a way of working out what the sine omega t is going to be. So it means that we can write this here as sine omega naught t. Then the Fourier transform of it is just going to be, well, the j's come up. And when the j comes up, it's equivalent to multiplying by minus j. Okay, again, I've mentioned that in another video as well. Um, so it means that you're going to end up with uh, the minus j pi delta omega minus omega naught plus j pi delta omega plus omega naught. Okay, so that's the second Fourier 
second um, pair that we're looking for and again you can see there it's two impulses two shifted impulses but now they're in the um in the frequency to me and the uh, the imaginary axis okay so let's have a wee look at these and if i go into um my lab again i think i've i should have it sitting Two, uh, uh, that's it. Yeah, got it sitting right here. Okay, so that lab window. Okay, just try and bring this up to here. Just bear with me. That lab. Um, capture window. Title. Let's see. Yeah, I can't seem to get that there. Figure two. Oh, there we go that's us okay so so that's it there okay um now that there is our our sine wave okay so you can see it's set down as zero so that's our sine wave and this here is our um our two functions impulses okay you can see them one's a plus j and one's minus j okay and you can see they're purely imaginary okay so that's the imaginary axis there and that's our omega axis so when i move them like this you can see there's no real part to them okay so it's purely imaginary okay so it gives you a good a good view of the sine and the cosine and and the frequency domain so uh, i think uh is that all i was going to going to mention that no but one other thing that we can do is just to finish it off we can look at the uh, look at them in the in the time domain equivalents okay so we can get um, both of the uh, both of them let's have a look see smooth draw so just to finish off we can also look at it in the frequency domain so we would end up with the by the same derivations we end up with in the time domain delta 1 up and 2 delta T minus T naught plus a half delta T minus T well plus T naught would give us our Fourier transform would give us our cos omega T naught and also one upon two J times delta T minus T naught minus one upon two J delta T plus T naught the Fourier transform of that would give us a sine omega t naught okay so that there is the final set of transform pairs okay so that's the Fourier transform of the sine and the cosine both in the frequency and in the time domains okay thank you for listening and i'll get you on the next video